The sports world was rocked recently when ESPN announced shocking layoffs of on-air talent. Household names somehow found themselves out of a job. But as the sting wore off of another significant layoff in the company's history, the third in the last decade, the ripple effect has sent waves well beyond the walls of Bristol. Staff reduction, regardless of reason, is never a good thing. And what's frightening for ESPN is that there are still many more consequences on the horizon. Some incredibly ironic and unintentional. How will they respond to this obvious setback? What's in store for those who lost their jobs? Is ESPN enabling their own downfall? How will the industry as a whole adjust? And is the network really in trouble? The unexpected consequences of ESPN's layoffs is coming up right after this. We're in the depths of summer and it's hot out. So you wanna avoid leaving the comfort of your air conditioning as much as possible. Going out to grocery shop or spend money on overpriced food, ain't it chief? That's where Factor comes in. With Factor, healthy, delicious meals are delivered right to your door with no prep and no mess. These never frozen meals are fresh and literally only take two minutes to heat up. However long it takes you to eat them is up to you. It takes me like three minutes. My favorite thing is that these meals are filling and delicious and around 500 150 calories or less. And now you can try Protein Plus meals for an added 30 grams of protein more per serving. And they even have upscale menu offerings. Factor now offers 34 different meals per week and 45 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, even breakfast. And with Factor, you get a complete dietary system, whether it's keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, Protein Plus, vegan or veggie, it's all here. It's all easy. So after this video, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 5points50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, that's factor75.com from the link below and use code 5points50 to get 50% off your first box. Part one, how? did we get here? In order to understand the lasting effects of ESPN's layoffs, we first have to understand their shifting business model and why they would even need to have such atrophic cuts in the first place. Throughout their heyday in the 90s and early 2000s, ESPN effectively leveraged a subscription-based model which allowed revenue to pour in. It seemed to make sense as they added more channels, even replicating themselves to create higher cost subscription packages for cable users and increase revenue. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. The money was built in, and though ratings mattered, ESPN had a seemingly pressureless revenue stream. Unfortunately, this was a house of cards, and as streaming TV, highlight services, and alternative media outlets started to take hold, user numbers dropped. And so did revenue. ESPN's model shifted from subscription-based acquisitions to focusing back on getting eyeballs on their channels to attract more advertisers to make up for the subscription revenue shortfall. ESPN found itself in a unique quandary. As they acquired more rights to broadcast live events, they still needed to maintain multiple channels in order to simulcast the plethora of live events which they were producing. In some cases, even ESPN News would carry sports because they simply had no place to put them. This created created an obvious problem. With all these channel slots, the network needed to fill airtime when live sports weren't happening. And so the hot take slash debate show format was born, and for a while, they worked. However, these shows would be the mountain upon which the avalanche of layoffs would slide down. In 2017, the first cost-cutting measures happened with a reduction of some programming, on-air talent, and back-end staff, about a total of 100 employees. In 2020, during the pandemic, the company cut nearly 300 production-related employees and effectively stopped hiring. That one made sense. And just recently, ESPN announced their most shocking layoffs, resulting in the loss of significant on-air talent. The names might have been surprising, but anyone in the industry was not shocked. While reducing jobs, ESPN has also made bold acquisitions, spending significantly on the rights to Monday Night Football, the Super Bowl, and of course, the Pat McAfee Show. It's clear since 2017 that the company needs to eliminate waste. However, there may be something worse for them on the horizon, and it could all be their fault. Part two, the unexpected consequences. Since you are probably curious, here is a complete list of the on-air talent who lost their jobs in the ESPN layoffs. 
there are some big names in there. Benjamin Franklin once said, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. He didn't say that, I'm just making sure you're paying attention. What really happened here is that ESPN has further opened the door for their competition to gain on them. But I'm not talking about Fox, CBS, NBC, or any other network. I'm talking about me. Yes, alternative media continues to gain on ESPN, and these layoffs signal a recognition that ESPN either is losing against us or doesn't have the will to compete anymore. Or does it? Enter Pat McAfee, the man some would say is the cause of all these layoffs as ESPN begins to reallocate resources to accommodate his large salary and production. What's funny is Pat built up his audience by doing the very things that one cannot do on ESPN. Cursing not giving a fuck, telling it like it is, and being outright, unapologetically authentic, and unaffiliated. Despite making more money than he ever did as an athlete and having a nine-figure deal with FanDuel, Pat still chose to join ESPN in a move that tells you something you already know. Money talks. But here's ESPN's giant problem. A view is a view. It doesn't matter if there are 80 people employed to get that view or just one guy in his basement. Eyeballs are eyeballs, and that's a tough reality the network has to face. To me, adding Pat McAfee is smart. It corrects a problem, but it also seems like a Hail Mary. There's a big what if. What if it doesn't work out? What if the confinements of the FCC alienate the audience? Still, there is one thing we aren't talking about. Here come your aha moment. ESPN is fueling their competition right now. If you're watching this, then I have gained another step on them. Their failures are at the forefront of all sports content right now, and ironically, they aren't the ones cashing in on it. It's the little guys like me, Flemlo, Brandon Perna, Flight Mike, Brett Coleman, Urinating Tree, in fact, anyone who is making a video on this right now. We might still be far behind, but the interval is getting smaller. We're getting faster, we're not slowing down. So where do we go from here? One thing that not many people have discussed is what happens to the talent that was let go. As Brandon Perna said in his video, sure, those people have made a lot of money, but I don't know many people who can have their income go from whatever it is to zero and have their lifestyle not be significantly interrupted. Do these personalities try to invade my arena? Or are they too late in starting on a platform as unforgiving as YouTube and social media is? Some people have made the leap, though many are finding out it's not as easy as it looks. For example, Trey Wingo has a channel with 25k subs that he started in 2020 when he was part of the second ESPN layoff. A lot of personalities aren't equipped to have the diverse set of skills to produce content on their own, or lack the resources or the patience to build an audience. So maybe they wait until things get better and another network hires them. Finally, let's be clear, ESPN will never go away. They actually are not in any serious trouble. This is only likely a small setback in an economy that has weaknesses and a changing landscape of sports commentary and opinion-based content. ESPN will always have live events and has innovated in that regard with things like the Manning cast. Also, side note, I do love ESPN+. However, they keep hearing footsteps from goofy, awkward fucks like me in their basements. We're here to compete. See ya on the field. Thank you, ESPN.